we try to understand what the world is made of, right? And um, this has a very long history, it goes back to antiquity. Well, and people discovered atoms, molecules, atoms, uh, nuclei. Blah, blah, blah. By the time we were discussing, people were thinking of the in basic ingredients of protons and neutrons were things that were called quarks. So the, don't ask me what quarks mean, because quark is not a word in any language. Uh, Gelman invented this thing because it's in a poem by James Joyce. Uh, but James Joyce invented words that did not exist. So the three quarks for Master Mark. But who knows what the, how the quarks for Master Mark. So anyway, because there were three, and uh, Gelman thought at that time that there were three quarks, so he invented the word quarks. So the, so people were thinking that there were three quarks, three types of quarks, which were the most fundamental particles for the time. And um, with uh, Glasho and uh, Luciano Magnani, we were trying to explain some strange features of, uh, of the interactions among these particles, in particular the quarks. And we found that with three quarks, we could not explain them. It was impossible to explain. But if we could add another one, we'd make them four, then everything would work perfectly. So that's all, that's all there is. Gone from three quarks to four quarks. It's very simple, in fact. It was a strange collaboration. Every time each one of us would come and say, I have an idea. And we would start talking. And then invariably the other two would join to prove him he was stupid. And it would, then we would change roles. Some other had the idea and the other two would put it on. And would go on forever and forever. Until the solution was found in a few minutes, two hours or three. I mean, we were, for months we were looking and all of a sudden things happened very nice. And in the evening, we had dinner, I remember, with uh, the three of us, but also Putsi, Luciano's wife at the time. And um, Putsi noticed that we were all looking very happy. Say, well, me, you are looking very happy. And Shelley told her, we expect our work to be in future textbooks. And uh, she was right. <laughs> Uh, Dyson had spent, had spent most of his career at the Institute of uh, for Advanced Studies in Princeton. That's where Einstein was. And so Dyson had met Einstein. And then he told me uh, something which is both sad but uh, pertinent. He said, well, when Einstein was around, Dyson was a young man. And uh, uh, Dyson made, uh, did all this great work on quantum field theory, which was, and Einstein was not interested. And um, said, uh, well, it's not interesting. And uh, then Dyson told me, look, after this experience, I decided that I will never tell a young man what he should do. <laughs> because even Einstein meant it wrong. <laughs> so, you see, it's not easy to tell a young man what he should do. What I, if I want to say something, is that he should do what he really likes. He must really like what he's doing. And, uh, you see, you, there is an old Roman, but he was writing in Greek. Lucianos. And then she wrote about um, how to study, how to do th great things in the study. He said, you have to work very hard. He added, you have also to have lots of luck. We were lucky in our lives. Not everybody had this chance. Uh, Luciano and myself we were very lucky 
to do this, to do, to do what we were liking, contrary to what other people were advising us at the time. Older people were telling us that we were wasting our time. So I don't want to tell younger people because they will. I'm sure that what, whatever I tell you, I'll tell them, most probably will turn out to be wrong because it's not easy. So the only thing I can tell is that they should really believe in what they like. And maybe if they are lucky enough, they will hit a good thing. But they should not be discouraged if they don't, because it's really a matter of luck.